So hello my friends, Devon Lennox here, Photography PX. In today's video we'll cover Panasonic's full company history. The birth of Panasonic begins with its founder, Konosuke Matsushita, born in 1894. As a young child, Konosuke studied as an apprentice at the Godai Bicycle Shop. Here his employers quickly saw his aptitude and interest in business. And as an apprentice, he learned much about the world and of business. At 15, he leaves the bicycle store to embark into the electrical business and begins working at the Osaka Electrical Light Company. Over the subsequent years, he rises to the level of inspector and begins redesigning and improving the light socket, but quickly decides he should start his own company. In 1917, he starts Sanyo Electric, which eventually produces a newly designed socket. In 1918, he relocates to a larger two-story house and establish electric housewares manufacturing. At this time, the company consists of three people, including his wife and brother-in-law. Their staff gradually increases while developing an attachment plug and a two-way socket, and the company later develops into the Panasonic that we know today. As the Japanese economy boomed during World War I, the company grew slightly, but difficult times quickly arose as trade unions became increasingly militant. But sales continued, and in 1920, he began expanding the company's presence to Tokyo, and later this year, he completes the construction of a factory, a new office, and the company numbered 50 employees strong. In 1927, the company moves into developing electrothermal products, starting with the super electric iron and next a foot warmer, both becoming huge successes. They later gradually expand into other electrical fittings, heating, and consumer appliances. The company quickly grows to 300 employees, and by 1930, they began producing radios. In 1933, they construct a modern facility and head office in Kodoma, now with 1,200 employees and over 200 products in manufacturing. In the same year, they begin producing small-size electric motors, which later debuts as a three-phase induction motor in 1934. By 1935, they begin expanding throughout Southeast Asia, now employing 3,500 employees and manufacturing 600 products. This year, they also file and incorporate the company, renaming it to Electrical Industrial Co. Later in 1938, they developed a prototype 12-inch television, which was Japan's first television broadcast. But in 1914, the Pacific War breaks out and manufacturing transitions to military needs, including wooden ships and aircrafts. In 1945, Japan surrenders, and the company now begins rebuilding from scratch with only 4,400 employees while losing 32 factories and office facilities across Japan. Over the next subsequent years, hardships arise as the company fights against restrictions and avoids dissolving. Luckily, in 1950, the Korean War breaks out, creating a sudden demand, and they officially began rebuilding the company. In 1951, Konosuke visits the U.S. for a three-month tour, broadening his perspective. The following year, they partner with Philips, the electrics company that we know today, for a long-term collaboration. In 1953, they developed the first national TV set in only two months and the first electric refrigerator. The following year, they release personal radio Radios, and their company grows to 18,000 employees as the home appliance era booms in 1955. Over the next three years, mass production begins, and the company builds a succession of automated factories to produce dry cells, batteries, washing machines, radios, vacuums, motors, and refrigerators, and they later develop their first home air conditioner and tape recorder. By 1959, they established the Electrical Corporation of America in New York City, and they later become world-renowned. 
Throughout the early 1960s, they began overseas manufacturing, broadening operations, and technical assistance in other countries. In 1961, Koniske resigns as president and his son-in-law takes the role. The company then launches a series of household products, including microwave ovens, gas stoves, space heaters, console stereos, speakers, cassette recorders, VCRs, and water coolers. And now the company becomes a comprehensive electronics manufacturer while growth continues. In the 1970s, they continue expanding internationally, and in 1971, they entered the company publicly on the New York Stock Exchange. However, sales slowed again in 1973 with the Yom Kippur War as inflation and recession hit. In 1977, his son-in-law resigns and Yamashita becomes president. The following year, they begin selling VCRs and with JVC, their subsidiary, jointly develop the VHS. And they also create a long-term supply agreement with RCA, then General Electric, which leads to VHS becoming a worldwide standard. In 1982, they developed their first CD player. Then, 1985, they produced their first VHS camcorder with a built-in camera that recorded directly to a standard VHS tape. In 1985, Tani becomes president and the company restructured its divisions in 1987. And in the same year, they partner with Beijing to produce color TVs starting in 1989. Simultaneously, they merge the company and focus on globalization across the Americas, Europe, and Asia. This same year is also when Koniske passes at the age of 94, who single-handedly built the world's largest and most successful electronics company. In 1990, they produce their first notebook computer, and in 91, their first cell phone with the world's smallest and lightest receiver, followed by an optical disc recorder for pictures. They continue to have record-setting economic expansion, but another recession occurs in 1992, slowing sales. At this point, this prompts a change in leadership, and Morishita becomes president. The following year, they buy out Philips's share in the company, dissolve, and take full ownership. And the same year, they create their first fluorescent light bulb. In 1994, they developed rechargeable lithium-ion batteries for cell phones and cameras. And in 96, they released their first ever mobile phone weighing less than 100 grams, then the first DVD player and the first widescreen plasma display. The following year, they devise a new internal company structure, integrating different product groups into separate clusters. And the same year, they released a DVD car navigation system. Then in 1998, they released their digital TV sets to the US and a portable DVD player along with HD video camcorders. In many regards, this is the year when Panasonic fully steps into the camera and photography industry that we know today. Now in the year 2000, Nakamura assumes the role of president, and in 2003, they unify branding and officially become Panasonic across all domains. Up until this point, they were going under the national brand. This year in particular is a significant milestone in their company history as it changes how we know them today. Following this year, they later go to develop bathtubs, kitchenware, furniture, home safety, security, and lighting products. In 2005, they opened the Amagoski plant, the world's largest plasma display panel location, and their fourth major facility. And at this point, the company dives deep into LCD and IPS display technology. In 2006, Osubo becomes president, and in 2008, they change their name to the Panasonic Corporation, and they fully embrace this title. In 2012, Suga becomes president of Panasonic Corporation, and in 2018, they celebrated their 100th year anniversary of founding. And from there, this is how we know Panasonic as we know them today. Panasonic has an exciting history of developing new consumer products to enhance people's quality of life, particularly in Japan where they were founded. And it's quite understated how many innovations they've single-handedly produced over these 100 years. As photographers, we may know them strictly for their camera division and their cinematography equipment, especially following their first CES presentation. 
And sure, they've made several industry setting releases since 2014 and when they first started back in early 2000. But like Sony and Olympus, this is just one aspect of their larger corporation and there's far more than meets the eye. So there you have it, my friends. There's the full company history of Panasonic Corporation as they are now known today. I've been your host, Von Lennox. We will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found the contents of today's video insightful and it added value to you. If you're new here, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Also, leave us a like and a comment in the description down below. Let us know if we overlook something or we missed something that we covered in today's video. I've been your host, Devon Lennox. Photography. <laughs>